How you folks doing? Sheet metal stud back. Want to give you a quick little how-to on how to solder sheet metal. Soldering sheet metal looks easy when you watch a guy do it that is skilled, and it is uh, very tough when you've never done it. It is actually quite frustrating um, when you watch somebody do it, and then you attempt, and nothing works out as planned. Um, so let me give you a little basic. Um, I want you folks to know that I'm going to do my best to get, show you kind of close up. Um, I'm going to get better with the camera. Let me know um, what I can do to get better so that you can see up close. Um, I'm going to do my best to show you folks. So, what do you need? You need sheet metal. I got scraps right here. What else do you need? You need tri bar solder. I get this from the local supply house. It's a nickel mix. I'm going to get you guys the exact ratio of what it is mixed with. Nice and flexible. I can bend it where I need it to go. Besides the solder, you need acid. This is muriatic acid. How do I know this is acid? Well, folks, it says acid right on it. Don't be a dummy. Write acid on your stuff. You don't want somebody to get hurt. On top of that, I use C flux. I have it mounted to a little wheel. Hopefully, you can read that. C flux. See it? Goopy and it's gray. What that does is it cleans out the impurities on the weld. Um, so, what you do is you etch it with the acid, that, that kind of cleans it up, that gets the oils up, that etches the metal. You hit it with the flux, that allows so that when the heat is introduced, all the impurities are leached out, and then you introduce heat. I use map gas. Map gas is fast, it's efficient, but you gotta be good. Guess what, this is very hot. If you're not good at controlling your temperature, your, your solder is going to be flowing like a river and you don't want that. You want it to stick. Let me give you folks a quick lesson. Sheet metal. Notice these pieces are separated. 24 gauge sheet metal. I'm going to lay them together. I'm going to take my acid carefully. Put a little bit in there. I take my acid with a paintbrush and I'm going to etch the seam. Now you want to be careful with this. What you want to realize is, wherever your acid goes, your solder is going to flow. Where your acid goes, your solder flows. So be very careful where that acid goes. You want to paint that seam really nice and pretty. Take my flux on a different brush. And I go straight over where the acid went. Don't be scared. The more the merrier. You can always clean it off after. Flux in one hand. I hold it in my right hand, torch in the left. Gotta tell you folks, because, you, because I do this so frequently, I don't look at the flame, it's all by, by ear. I know by the sound of the flame where I'm at and what my temperature is. Now I don't know by degree, but I know as far as what kind of flow I want with the solder. Um, and the reason you, you end up developing that is because when you solder outdoors, especially on high areas on roofs, you can't see the flame. You literally have no vis visual of the flame, it's only sound. So, got the torch going in my left hand, solder in my right hand. Let's lay it be. I'm working them both in unison. I'm riding a fine apex of heat. Not too hot, not too cold. I'm moving as I go. And I'm readjusting as I go by reading exactly what is taking place. Okay, we got some expansion of the metal. So, that brings me to a whole nother spiel. Let me show you guys. When you're soldering two pieces like this, it's good to have weights. So, there I go. I'm laying down a nice chunk of railroad steel. I'm going to continue to lay that bead. Both pieces were moving pretty good on me. This will allow them to close the little gap.
Right? I'm gonna get a nice rag for you folks. Show you the final product when you wipe, wipe it off. Okay, here we had two separate pieces of metal, not separate anymore. It's very, very, very strong. Um, you can see the bead is not the cutest bead. Um, it's not super pretty, but I could go back and easily touch that up. I can add heat here, I can add, add, add heat there. And if I added weights to both sides, I could close the gaps in there and I would, be, I would need quite a bit less solder. Um, soldering gets a lot more interesting when you're soldering what we call verticals. Um, which is when the pieces are vertical. So imagine gravity is not on your side and you are working against that the whole entire time. As everything's falling, you're adjusting with heat, with uh, temperature, acid flux, um, and you're trying to get, get uh, lay that bead. Um, it's, it's quite fascinating. If I can help you guys with anything else, please let me know. Like, subscribe, share, sheet metal stud. Anything I can do to help you, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, folks.